welcome to LGW3 Orchids and Exotics. Another episode on growing orchids. So, I'm going to do this video today on terrariums. Um, I have two terrariums. I've had one for about three and a half years now. The other one I've had for about I don't know, three quarters of a year. I've had pretty good success with it, uh, with both of them actually. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and take a tour, and I'll explain how I keep things growing and the controls that I have in place to monitor things, etc. All right, let's go ahead. So first of all, the type of terrarium that I use for both of these actually are terrariums that you would use for a reptile, etc. That's generally what you would use them for. Uh, here in the U.S., you can pick these up at Petco, PetSmart, I'm sure uh, Amazon has them, they're basically all over, and uh, they go for around about $120, give or take, sometimes you can find them on sale. Uh, pretty sturdy construction here, you can see it's all glass, well built, and uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look, so as you can see here, there's a cool little orchid. You can really see the little flowers there on the top. Almost invisible. This here is a Lepanthes, sorry, Lepanthopsis astrophora. Really cool looking small flowers. Some other uh, carnivorous plants back there. Uh, here we go. Here's a cool one. Here is a. This is a Sigmato Stalix Herminia. You can take a look at those little cool looking yellow flowers. A very delicate and fragile mini, but beautiful nonetheless. And over here we have a Lepanthes Telepagonaflora. You can see that's doing really well in there. Look at all the blooms. This, this thing's basically continuously in bloom beautiful little orchid yeah so getting more into how I grow I would classify this as a intermediate to more warmer growing uh, typical temperature ranges anywhere from I would say probably the lowest 65 degrees probably the highest it gets in the summertime when I don't run the air conditioner all the time it can easily go up to 83 84 I keep a constant uh, high humidity in here. Uh, as you can see back here, I use a reptile fogger. Uh, comes with some control adjustments. You can adjust the output. And up there, I actually have it running into the terrarium. Uh, now, I wanna make note, these panels here, these were extra. These are not something that's provided when you buy the terrarium at least not the one that I have. I actually had to buy these at a local hardware store and they happen to fit nicely on here. I can actually adjust the slit size that's open here for maximum or minimum airflow. I have two fans, one fan here, another fan here. Um, these are great because they're tied together, they're adjustable speed and I can control one pushing air in and I have this one actually pulling air out. So all of this is set up in conjunction with a heater that I have in the bottom. And then if you can see there, there's a heating mat. So what I do is I have all these running on controls. As you can see over here, I have a uh, temperature gauge. Apologize for the flicker there. It's just the way, uh, I guess, the camera refresh rate versus how this LED is being displayed. So. Um, anyway, right now it's 75.3, and this maintains the temperature, whatever setting I have, it's fully adjustable, I believe up to like 100 degrees, of course you'd never want to go that high. And uh, yeah, so this maintains the proper growing environment, keeps everything flowing nice. I have lights up above, uh, this thing gets more than enough light, I would say some of these I actually had to block some of the lighting in the back to to uh, dull the intensity down but overall these probably are getting 
I would say around 1500 foot candle probably a little more in some cases uh, yeah so that's how I grow um, now one other thing to note and I'll actually show it to you on my other terrarium in a second is uh, if you look over here I have a temperature controller uh, I'm sorry monitor and actually that has a software capability where it sends everything to the cloud online I can monitor it from anywhere in the world as long as I have an internet connection and I'm also able to set alerts if temperatures or humidity something exceeds um, you know min max range that I'm not comfortable with or that I decided to set so that's a great alternative I've tried the Govee ones they don't work that well so I have switched over to an ambient weather station which actually provides an additional up to eight separate sensors that you can connect and put them anywhere in your house so all right we'll go ahead and take a look at my second terrarium okay so over here is the second terrarium this one here is a little bit taller you can see it's about two and a half to three feet uh, the other one that we were just looking at is about 18 inches high and here's the sensor that I was talking to you about before you can see in there this actually shows you the temperature the humidity level and again this gets monitored goes to a cloud I actually have an indoor weather station as well that I will uh, pop up here in the top give you a quick view of what that looks like so yeah again same setup got the heating mat in the bottom over top here you can see I have the fan controls humidity is actually going in from the top right there and it does a great job for keeping orchids that are harder to grow that are require very high humidity you can see all these uh, these beautiful aerial roots everything's doing really well nice Tillandsia recurvata this is from Florida bunch of other cool miniatures in there yeah and uh, I wanted to make note too one thing to take note and you can actually take advantage of this is that you know anywhere you grow indoors there's always little microclimates um, depending on uh, whether you have a window open whether you have uh, higher humidity whether it's near a bathroom kitchen etc same thing here um, due to the humidity there you can actually see that these orchids here because of the flow actually pushing out these telumnias and you can see the roots on them they absolutely love the high humidity that comes out of here so as this thing airs out I'm taking advantage of the microclimate to actually uh, help with humidity on the outside here so definitely important definitely something everyone can take advantage of and take a look at this beauty this just opened up this is a Sophronitis cernua look at the colors on that you can see it's super happy with all the aerial roots beautiful beautiful mini cat layer stunning colors look at that so again all of this takes advantage of the additional humidity provided by this terrarium setup uh, now as far as cost I would say for the heating pads themselves usually you can get them for around 20 bucks terrariums again can range from anywhere from a hundred to hundred fifty two hundred dollars depending on how much you want to spend and I would save the controller for the heaters another maybe 20 bucks and the terrarium fogger that's gonna run you about forty dollars depending on where you shop for those and fans easily 15 bucks 20 bucks maybe Amazon so definitely not a cheap hobby but if you enjoy growing hard to grow orchids that require high humidity it's definitely worth giving a shot all right let me know whatever questions you have feel free to reach out contact me uh, comments I always appreciate feedback let me know how you grow and have a great day thanks okay everybody 
So let's run through a quick demo of the ambient weather software slash website slash mobile app capabilities. Uh, let me just start off by saying I in no way have a uh, sponsorship with ambient weather. This is just, I think it's a great product they have. I use it for monitoring my indoor conditions, my terrariums. Uh, it's just, it's a great app. So let me go ahead and run through it. I'm sure you'll probably agree with a lot of points here I'm about to make. So as you can see, these are other people throughout the country that also have the ambient weather uh, set up, be it a uh, most likely a weather station with some other secondary devices they can connect to. So we'll go here. This is ambientweather.net. This is the actual address. I'm going to go to my dashboard. And as you can see here, this is my weather station. So first thing you'll notice here, it shows a little graph. I'm going to go ahead and click on tiles. And yes, it's very cold here in the Northeast tonight. It's 28.6 degrees. That is in Fahrenheit, not centigrade. So it is cold. Uh, if you go ahead and look here, these are the other uh, conditions that are monitored. I have a rain gauge on there, the, the air quality indoors. Um, of course, there's no UV index or any lux right now. It's dark outside. So these are the other temperature sensors. If you recall, I showed in the other terrarium video that there's that little sensor. It comes with the stock one. This is the indoor one. I have this just in my living room, but you can buy up to eight additional ones. And currently I have one in the bedroom, which I call the cool zone and another one's in the living room, which is the warmer zone. It's just the way the temperatures happen to be. This is actually north east facing so it tends to be cooler here's uh you know closer to the kitchen more activity so it stays warmer here's the terrarium here is the other terrarium and it's great too because it shows you the dew, dew point um and so if you look here let's go ahead and i'm going to click on terrarium four i'm actually going to click the graphing and this is actually going to show all the sensors. We'll just have to scroll down. So, okay. So if you look here, it's pretty cool. You can actually see um, the temperature. If you look in the mornings here, morning around 6.15 a.m., it tends to be the coolest in my house. Of course, you know, everybody's still sleeping, getting ready to wake up. It's the longest part of the night. Everything's cooled down. And then you can see the trend here. As the lights come on inside the house, other activity, if things start to heat up, got up to about 74 degrees today. And now we're on a descent again. And it's it's nighttime here. It's about 830. So what's cool about this, too, is you can also see the humidity. So I mentioned before that I have all of my terrariums on humidity cycles with the um, the reptile fogger. So basically it comes on every three hours. I have it come on for about seven minutes uh, per cycle. And so as you can see, the humidity rises up. Here's 91%. And then slowly over the next couple hours, it falls back down. Now keep in mind, I also have the ventilation fans there, you know, circulating air in. So that also helps to bring it down. And, that, and that's with intent. I want to do it, you know, maybe a half hour, hour after a cycle so that the plants have some time to absorb high humidity in the air and then, you know, refresh it with some cooler air. We don't want to start growing fungus and mold and other nasty things in there. So that being said, that's how that works. Now I mentioned to you and oh, what's cool too, by the way, and this may or may not be useful. I like to see this trend. Here is a, uh, I'll just show you our outdoor temperatures for the past year. I got this back in May. I guess it was one of my COVID hobbies. So as you can see here, this is Northeast New Jersey. Uh, I'm sorry, Central New Jersey. And you can see this is, you know, Northeast US. And you can see here, here's our temperatures. Um, these are the averages, I guess you could say. Um, you know, we, we exceed here summers easily over nineties. Uh, and we had actually quite a few very hot and humid days. Uh, but of course, you know, you would expect to see this U shape here's summer here. Now we're getting into fall. 
And eventually you'll see that trend climb back up again next May. So uh, I mentioned to you about alerts. So let's go ahead and show you this. So here you go. Here's the alerts. I removed my phone number just so you can't see it. Uh, but this is very useful. So these are all the alert settings I have. So of course you have basic ones for the battery, etc., just to alert you on that. But I also have some set up here for humidity. And if you look here, if either terrarium goes below 50%, I should get an alert. Um, and this is a good thing to have. You know, I have it for the, the temperatures on these, indoor temperatures. And just to go ahead and show you, this is pretty cool. You can actually see here where this actually tracks when the alerts were sent. So you can see here, I have an alert for when uh, high pressure goes over 30.5 inches of mercury, and it has. We just had a cold front come through, high pressure. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And these go back, you know, if I were to look over the summer, I've, I've gotten some alerts where it's, uh, you know, either the humidity is too low or the temperature is too high, etc. Sometimes it can be annoying. You can play with it a little bit and tweak those settings. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. You get your other customized unit settings here. Um, you know, like I said, I think this is a really great product. It's helped me. Again, you can put up to eight sensors. I may actually pick up, you know, one or two more sensors. We'll see. But uh, in the meantime, this has definitely helped with monitoring capabilities and keeping an eye on, on things anywhere you have an internet connection. You can check it out on your phone. Phone app looks similar. You get the tiles. You also get the graphing view. So that's pretty cool. You can see the trends. And yep, and go here you go. You can see uh, it also gives you like a little weather forecast. I guess it's their ambient weather that they have, you know, weather forecasting that they're also able to apply. Look at those crazy temperatures going up to 61 by Friday. Jeez. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So let me know if you have any questions. Again, you know, I always like to show new products if I can, some things that have helped me and uh, any way to make growing a little easier and a little more definitive without having uh, mass casualties of plants from overheating or lack of humidity, etc. So, all right. Thanks.